All right, everyone, if you're watching this video right now, our winter drop is officially live on the website. We just put it live 6.30 p.m. So if you guys wanna take an opportunity to go over to our website right now, get yourself some stuff for Christmas, buy stuff for your kids, buy stuff for your friends. It's all live, all sorts of cool stuff. And Jordan has a fish on. It's really nice, dude. I just gotta look at it. <laughs> we th we decided to come out. This has been a really a lot of a lot of work to put this winter drop together. And me and Jordan were like, dude, let's go out tonight and try to catch a fish and just celebrate because it, we're excited. We got a lot of cool products coming out. Some awesome new worm colors, all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. Here's a link down below. And I also put a little tiny special Christmas discount code in the description. So make sure you guys check that out. Thanks again for tuning in. Happy Let's holidays, fish. everyone. Happy holidays. Woo. Oh, it's such a nice fish. Oh, come back to me. It is come such back. a nice fish, guys. Oh, oh what a move. That was crazy. How did she do that? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Wow. We are so glad you guys got to enjoy that. We did not know this was even gonna happen. We were like, let's go out and just film a little, you know, teaser talking about the winter drop coming out right now. And we just caught a really nice fish. Oh, baby. Look at how cool that thing is. The hook just came out instantly. What an egg wagon, dude. Just a specimen. Well, everybody, great coming up at you here. There's a video just like this one. But we're gonna be doing something a little bit different and getting you a little bit of a catch and cook. So stay tuned, coming at you right now. Boy, if that doesn't make you hungry, I don't know what will. Welcome back everybody to another delicious episode of Addicted Fishing. Today, we came out, we're gonna go salmon fishing. Last night we were at our live feed, me and Cameron and Marlon. Every Wednesday we have a live fishing show on YouTube and Facebook. And we were talking about, the subject was, what do you do with all the fish in your freezer or what's your favorite way to cook and prepare it? So we were sitting there talking, my imagination had a little, little light bulb go off and I said, dude, we need some chowder. So today we're out here fishing for salmon with some stinky bait. We're gonna turn the stinky bait into a nice smelly Chinook hopefully, or a coho. And then we're gonna go home and we're gonna do one of my very favorite recipes for fish. We're gonna make ourselves a chowder. And stay tuned with us today, see how this unfolds. We got a perfect con river condition, we got lots of stinky bait, we got fishing rods, and we got all the will and want in the world. So, let's go fishing. or a fish. I guess it's all a matter of perspective, right? It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen in like the next 20 feet. There we go. There you go, he's on there, he's on there. Got him, got him. <laughs> Live action, everybody. Right at the very end, right where I thought they'd be just got chomped. Let him chew on it, let him chew on it, and I just waited till he ate it, till he was about to poop it out. Then I laid into him. Drag's good. This thing feels huge. We're fighting him against a lot of current here, so we're just gonna go with the flow. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Let's see what kind of color we got here. So this late in the season, we're in November now, and out here in the Pacific Northwest, you know, a lot of our salmon come in from about August all the way till now, till like Thanksgiving, so a lot of times we'll come out here on the river like that dead one floating there and we'll get into a lot of dark fish so today we're out here searching for one that's edible the dark ones can cut good sometimes and the meat will be that pinkish salmon color but what we want is a nice shiny one straight from the ocean so i haven't seen this one yet oh god oh god he's taking off oh it's really nice it's really nice not as big as it feels but it's a nice nice chrome one come on buddy Glasses are getting all fogged up. Heart's racing. It's making me work up an appetite here. All right, I shouldn't. I shouldn't talk about it yet, though. We all know how that goes. 
you start talking about your fish too much, he'll either materialize into a non-eater or he'll come off. I don't want to see him do either. It'd be a delicate operation here. We're running out of running out of room. Get into the shallows. Oh, total chaos. Total freaking chaos. Oh, it's a nice fish. Come on, girl. Come to Papa. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, I can't turn her head. <laughs> oh, it's such a nice one. Oh my God, I'm freaking out, you guys. I'm freaking out. Oh, come on. Come to me. Come to me. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, we got a jumper in the background. It's a fishy situation out here, everybody. Come on. Oh, oh my God, come on. Come on. Come on, sweetie. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Oh my God, stop it. Stop it. Oh my God, I don't know what to do here, everybody. We got a big log coming up. Side. Got a plug on in the water. Total chaos. Don't go into the boat. No, no, no. No, sweetie. I got a big log coming up here, guys. It's now or never. Come on, sweetheart. No. Don't do that. Oh, she's under the boat. Oh, gonna have to navigate around this here. So we're safe for the log, though. We're safe for the log. Oh, guys, I'm freaking shaking. This might be the best fight I've had all season. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. There she is. There she is. Oh my God, I got it! Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God, I can't even get in the boat. Oh my God, everybody. Oh my God. I need to pull over. That was the most insane fight I have had. In my life, I'm shaking. Look at this fish, everybody! Oh my god! I'm hyperventilating. I've caught a lot of fish in my lifetime, guys. But that was exciting. Comment below and put your thought of that fight. I can't even speak right. That was epic. Addicts! Oh my! What do you think? of that Woo! that's gonna make chowder for the whole damn town almost almost didn't make it to us here she's got a big old seal scar on her side here might even be from a gill net out in the big river but oh my god now that is why we keep going fishing ladies and gentlemen i can't tell you i had a great fall caught a lot of fish but that right there We'll keep you going back for more till the day you die. That's the dreams are made of. That is just a one special salmon. Goodness gracious. Definitely wasn't expecting that. I thought I felt a lot of weight on the end of the line there, but that was a lot of weight on the end of the line. So we're gonna get this bad girl bled out, get her nice and processed. We'll head back up. I don't think we even need to keep fishing because I'm not into wasting fish. And this is more than enough fish for our chowder. You hear that? Sounds like a dinner bell ringing. Let's go do it. All right, everybody. So we made it back into the kitchen and we're actually gonna use an actual carcass for this broth. We're not gonna use the carcass from that big girl because it's just a little bit too much. I wanna use it for a different recipe. But what I have here is a nice, beautiful, fresh chrome coho that we caught yesterday in a video that I saved just for this. So I'm gonna take my knife. I'm gonna get this thing as clean as I can. All right, so got this thing completely cleaned off, got all the blood off of it, got a little bit of meat and that head, and there's so much fat and stuff and omega-3 stored in that head. That's why we use this for the stock. It really, really makes a delicious, flavorful, actual stock for the soup. You can use chicken broth normally if you're making some kind of, of chowder, but I'm gonna use a fish stock and maybe a little bit of scoop of a, a vegetable broth as well. So a little bouillon. So I'm gonna take this over to my, probably got about, eight to 10 cups of rolling, boiling water. So I'm gonna add my fish, I'm gonna keep it on a high. I'm gonna use about a half tablespoon or so of this. I can't believe it's not boiling. This is just vegetable, 
just to add a little bit of more flavor to go with that fish, and that should do the trick. I'll let that boil in there for about 15, 20, 30 minutes. If you have time and you're not making this fast, I'm gonna let this go for about 15, 20 minutes because we're making this video, but you can let this go for hours if you want and really pull all that bone marrow and everything out of that fish's bones and get a lot of that full flavor that you do from using some sort of bone or skeleton for a broth. So what I got here, I got about a half, I'd say one third pound of peppered bacon that I'm gonna add to this. I've got a few different ingredients that I'm gonna put in. I got the old fingerling potato. I'm gonna chop those in half. I got some whole kernel corn that I'm gonna fry up actually with my bacon. I got a nice onion in here to go with. I'm gonna chop that up. We got our bay leaves. We got some dill and we got some heavy whipping cream. So this is what's gonna make up our dish here. The way I'm gonna cut this fish is kind of unique. And this is how I like it, because this is gonna be a big, hearty, chunky soup here. And I'm gonna make sure, I shouldn't even say soup, it's a chowder. I'm gonna run my knife right along. I'm gonna skin this fish here first. Run that straight down the tail. And there we have it, nice chunk of meat. So I want big, flavorful chunks of this salmon in that stew. So what I'm gonna start doing, I'm gonna start cutting these big chunks here. I'm gonna start from the tail up. You can see how fatty that meat is. I'm gonna keep it in nice, probably about just mouthful chunks. Like think about bite-sized proportions if you're actually eating this for in a normal fashion for dinner. Keep cutting that thing in one of those nice little loins. And I like to use the tail piece because there's no bones. You don't have to pick anything out. It makes it nice and easy to just cut that up with all the rest of your ingredients. And it makes it very easy to add to the soup. One little trick I like to do is before I add this to give it just that little extra kick of flavor, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fry my bacon up first. That way a lot of that grease and everything doesn't go into that actual, that actual broth itself. So I'm gonna fry this up, I'm gonna drain a little of that grease, and then I'm gonna throw a real curveball at you. I'm gonna fry up some of the corn I'm gonna put in here with that bacon, give it that nice little char, that nice little blackened flavor. All right, so now that I've got that bacon about halfway cooked, I'm gonna add in about half that can of corn, or whatever your preference is for your chowder. If you don't like a ton of corn in your chowder, then, you know, you and I are just different people. So I'm gonna get some of that corn in there. I'm gonna let that thing fry up. Let it get that same kind of blackening as that bacon's gonna start getting there. I'm gonna let that go for about another five minutes. And let's check our broth here. I think we're just about there. So what you wanna see is the right color in that broth. Everybody knows what a good soup broth looks like. You don't want it too clear, and it never is gonna hurt to actually taste it. So looking in there, I know it's starting to get a pretty good color to it. I can already smell it, it smells delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that about 10 more minutes, put it into my strainer, and then I'm gonna get all my ingredients added together. And then once I add all those ingredients together, time is the essence. And we're gonna let that thing sit slow and low and just melt all those flavors together until we can't take it anymore and we have to dig in. Okay, so moment of truth. Oh wow, smells delicious. Everything looks like it's kind of cooking together here. For the sake of time, we're gonna take this over here. It's been about a half hour or so. And I think you can really let this stock go for two or three hours if you have time for it. If you're doing this recipe all day, or you're at home all day on a nice rainy day, and you wanna try this with some, some fish that you have in the fridge, let that thing go as long as possible. It's only gonna make your stock better. So I'm gonna put it in there just like that. Ooh, absolutely wonderful. So there we have it. That's our main base of our stock here. So I'm gonna probably add just a little bit more water, a few more cups, but I'm gonna get this back on the stove here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my fingerling potatoes first and foremost. I'm gonna get these things cooking right away. And if I get these big ones like this, I'm gonna go ahead, cut them in threes, but most of them I'm just gonna cut straight in half. That way you can get these big chunks of potato in your bowl and have something to snack on the whole time of your meal. All right, I got my potatoes going. I'm gonna go in with my corn. All my goodies. From there, I'm gonna add my onions. My shallot, just a little bit of the green onions and the 
The bay leaves I want to go in as well. And the dill is something I'm going to add last. I'm going to let that kind of top off the dish. It's almost like a garnish. So I'm going to start letting all that get to know itself. Next goes in our salmon. Beautiful. Use about a whole stick of butter. Then we're going to add about a half cup of heavy whipping cream to get our color. Then, again, time is the essence here. The longer and the slower you can let this cook, the better at this point. You want all those flavors to start to melt together. What I am going to do, grab the Old Faithful, Randall's, Reverend Randall's seasoning. Give it just a little spritz across there. As well as a healthy dose of garlic powder here. Just like so. As well as a little bit of the old faithful Johnny's. Gonna start mixing this stuff all together here. Okay, so now in a perfect world, we're gonna let this simmer just about as long as we can. Whether it be one to two to three hours, we're gonna check back on it about every 20 minutes. After an hour or so, as soon as all those flavors start to melt together, we're gonna add our starch and our flour, which I'm gonna show you here in just a second, and then we're gonna be ready to eat. Okay, everything is perfect now. The way I know that this stuff is getting done, pretty much everything in there other than the potatoes cooks quickly. So I'm gonna bring that potato up, I'm gonna push through. It cuts nicely, I know I'm gonna enjoy that. Might as well give it a little taste test first. A cook should never serve his or her food without tasting it. Very good. I'm gonna take the rest of my green onions right on top there. I'm gonna toss my dill in. Oh, that smells so good. I am definitely a dill fan. I don't know about you guys out there. Okay, what I'm gonna do now to thicken this thing up, this is the trick. I'm gonna make sure that's over direct heat. I'm gonna turn that thing on high. I'm gonna get this into like an incredible rolling boil. And then I'm gonna add about a half cup or so of either cornstarch Cornstarch you need to use a lot less, but I'm gonna use flour in this instance. So you can use cornstarch or flour. Flour you need to use more of. So I'm gonna let this thing get all the way up to just a rip, roar, and boil. Okay, now that that thing's on a rolling boil, I'm gonna get it going into a slurry. Start spinning it in a circle here. While it's rolling boil, make sure you got a long enough spoon you don't burn the heck out of yourself. I'm gonna drop that down, and I'm gonna add my flour in here, just like so. Like I said, about a probably about a half cup or so. Just like that. And why you want it doing that rolling boil and moving so quickly is so that this stuff doesn't make dumplings. You can see how it's almost at the surface there, if it's not rolling boil, it'll start to make those little cubes of, of flour and you don't want that. You want that to actually bust those apart by boiling like that. And then immediately thereafter, kill your heat. And we're gonna cover this up we're gonna give our last final touches on this dish, and then we are going to pig out. All right, moment of truth, everybody. I'm actually drooling still. Look at how beautiful that is. You can see all those awesome ingredients. Those purple potatoes, that corn, bacon. What a beautiful, beautiful meal. Thank you, Mrs. Fish for giving us all this bounty and sustenance. Let's go eat. Okay, so I'm gonna dig into this thing here. I'm gonna make sure to get quite a bit of corn, a nice little chunk of that bacon, big chunk of fish there, a little chunk of tater. Let's see what's going on. Absolutely delicious. The texture and the consistency is exactly how I like it. But I will say I did add too many bay leaves. I definitely can taste those things this time, which use that as a lesson, only add about one or two of those bay leaves to that. I added three or four and that was definitely too much, but it's still delicious. And the flavor of that salmon, along with those potatoes and that bacon, that little hint of corn and that tiny little, you know, that accent of dill at the end of that makes this one of the best chowders I've ever had. Mm. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you had as much fun as I did landing that giant fish. 
and cooking this excellent meal and living off the land a little bit, making the best of these times that we live in and using cheap ingredients to make an absolutely delicious meal you can't even find anywhere else. So if you guys wanna see more catching cooks like this, be sure to go up here, click this link to this next video. Go down, hit subscribe so that you're not missing these videos when they come out. Turn on the bell notification, give this video a thumbs up and comment below with what recipe you wanna see us do next. And you could be the comment of the day, just like this guy right here. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. You stay fishy, we'll see you out there.